Right, so we're still in the current year, and now we're looking at when dividends are declared by S, what happens in the consolidated financial statements. So let's just try and picture this. H has an 80% shareholding in S, and S is now declaring dividends of 100, which means these dividends, 80 of which will belong to S, uh, sorry, 80 of which will belong to H, and the remaining 20 belongs to the non-controlling interest. Does that make sense? Now, how does this look in the individual financial statements, and what do we need to do with this on consolidation? So in the individual financial statements, if these dividends have not yet been paid in H Limited, what we'll see is we'll see a dividend income sitting in profit or loss of 80, and we're going to see dividends receivable because this hasn't been paid yet from S to H, so they're going to show a debtor, a dividend receivable of 80 within their statement of financial position. Now, S Limited is going to show dividends declared and expense, but this expense is going to go not through PL but through equity. Remember, dividends, whenever you declare dividends, it only goes through the statement of changes in equity. It doesn't go through PL. And it's going to have a liability, shareholders for dividends of 100, because it owes that amount to, the, to its shareholders. It owes that amount in dividends to its shareholders based on the declaration. So as you can see here, within the group financial statements, we now have dividend expense and we have dividend income and it relates to exactly the same dividends, so we need to eliminate them. In order to eliminate dividend income, it's a credit in profit or loss, we would need to debit it. So we would debit our dividend income in profit or loss and we would credit our dividend declared. And this is going to be in equity because remember, whenever you declare dividends, it goes directly through the statement of changes in equity. It doesn't go through profit or loss. Now, dividend, our dividend income is 80 and our dividend declared by the subsidiary is 100. Now, as you can see, there's a difference of 20 here. But in our diagram that we did right at the beginning, we know that this 20 goes to the non-controlling interests. So we're going to then debit the non-controlling interests in equity with the remaining 20. And that's how we would then calculate, or that's how we would then eliminate the dividend income and the dividend expense when the subsidiary declares a dividend. So next, what do we do with this dividend receivable, which is a deb debtor, and the shareholders for dividends, which is a liability or creditor in S Limited? So these also need to eliminate. So we're going to then debit, because the dividend, the shareholders for dividends is a creditor, we're going to debit it. So we're going to debit shareholders for dividends, and this is going to be in the statement of financial position, and we're going to debit it only with the amount that relates to the intergroup payable between H and S, and that amount is only 80. The remaining 20 is getting paid outside of the group, so that's fine to stay into our consolidated financial statements. We're only going to eliminate the portion that is between companies within the group, which is between H and S. So we're only going to debit... In this instance, we're only going to debit 80, and we're going to then credit our dividend receivable. And this is also in our statement of financial position. It's a debtor, so we've credited it, and we're going to credit it with 80. So as you can see here, if the dividends have already been paid in the individual financial statements, we're not going to have this data and creditor, and that's then we're not going to have this journal entry. But if the dividends have not yet been paid, we're going to have the data and the creditor within H and S respectively, and then we're going to have to eliminate that data and creditor as well as the dividend income against the dividend receivable and also giving the non-controlling interest their portion of the dividend that S is declaring.